Ladies and gentlemen, members of the press, welcome to today's program. Definitely one of the most popular topics that I train on, and that is uh, Microsoft Outlook. This is the first part of a three-part series. There's so much to learn and gain by studying in Outlook. I think you're going to probably sign up for all of them. They're always free. You're welcome to uh, sign up for all my webinars. And uh, by way of introduction, my name is Warren Stokes. I am the Director of Sales at Avidian Technologies, who's the developer of Profit CRM for Outlook. I have found that people that use Outlook want to learn more about our CRM called Profit and vice versa. Today, uh, the format will be to uh, give you some of the high level concepts, uh, just kind of an overview to frame the, the demonstration and training. And then we'll spend most of our time today in the actual live demonstration of Outlook basics. Let's get started. The um, topics today are many, there's quite a few aspects to this. So hopefully you can, um, uh, and I've got to keep an eye on my chat here. Um, yeah, some questions about audio, but anyway, um, th this is being recorded. If somebody asks, you can uh, access the recording later. I'll post my contact information, but let's just kind of run through the topics here uh, briefly. The key to understanding Outlook is understanding all of its various functions, but the four primary functions are email, calendar, tasks, and contacts. And we're gonna cover the basics of all of those today. And a very important thing is just get your navigation sorted out. Uh, and that is done by setting up your views and you can arrange your screens different ways to your liking, whatever, whatever works for you. I'll be showing you some navigation options which are not always that intuitive, how to open views and um, folders in new windows, which is handy. Talk about the ribbon. Uh, it's always a, somewhat of a mystery. I've talked to many people who just don't quite get the idea of what the ribbon is and how you use it properly, how to customize the ribbon. We're going to talk about some pretty cool things that I think might you might enjoy and be able to impress your friends and colleagues. Um, one of them is called Quick Parts, inserting content from templates, which is an Outlook function. If you're on Office 365 or now called just Microsoft 365, you'll see there's a templates function in, in, the, um, in the program. Uh, a really fun one is called Quick Steps. Uh, it's just a quick, quick way to, you know, create automated actions and, uh, and, you know, how to insert content, including like your signature into an email if it's not done automatically. Searching is always a big topic. You know, how to, how to search for things in Outlook. We'll cover basic search. We'll talk a little bit about how to use uh, Boolean terms so you can refine your search. Uh, things like find an exact match and, and all of which would be save you valuable time. And the quick access toolbar does quite a few things. It basically gives you kind of shortcuts to everything. And I'll be providing some tips on how all that works. And I do wanna mention that Outlook uh, comes in various flavors and forms. And um, the main two choices that you have with, with Outlook, and you can actually have both versions, but there's what's called the Outlook desktop client, which runs natively in the Microsoft application, of, which is part of Microsoft Office. You're probably all familiar with it, um, but there's also Outlook for web, or it's now called the Outlook web app. So just briefly, I wanted to explain that I, as I started to create a, a kind of a chart or a table comparing the two, it got to be kind of silly because uh, you can you, you can almost you know do nothing on the Outlook web app as compared to the desktop client. If any of you wanted to learn more about that, uh, feel free to contact me later. But um, suffice it to say that I'm gonna be focusing in on the desktop client uh, which has all the full functionality, very powerful uh, 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 application. And so first, let's talk about what really the Outlook is all about. These four things, email, calendar, tasks, contacts. Uh, it's important to know what they're there for, how to use them, and why to use them. So email, I think you all know, is just your communications. You send and receive emails all day long. I ever did at least 150 inbound emails uh, myself and probably almost that many outbound every single day. I have a, another webinar on how to tame your Outlook inbox. You should check it out. By the way, you can find all my webinars on YouTube. You just search for Warren Stokes Outlook Training and you'll find it all. 
And I'm easy to reach too if you ever uh, want to contact me as I'll share my contact information again towards the end of the program. Calendar, everybody knows what a calendar is, but uh, what is it really for? It's to manage your time. I'm going to show you some very specific techniques that you can use with your calendar to help manage your time and be more productive. And then I get a lot of questions like, what, do, what are tasks all about? Why don't I just put things on my calendar? Well, the main concept is that your calendar blocks off time to do things, whether it's a meeting or some ta some function that you got to perform. Whereas tasks uh, give you a list of to do's and they stay in your visibility as you'll see until you get them done. Uh, and contacts is really um, a digital address book. Uh, in the old days, we call it a Rolodex. It's basically you know your business cards of everybody you know or all the people you know in your world. And it's a very powerful function. Profit CRM turbocharges that a lot, uh, which is our program I'm not gonna spend time on today, but many of you are profit users, but I think you'll find some useful things just about the Outlook context. So rather than just uh, going through any more of the, the slides, let me start by just showing you a few cool things to do. And just I just happened to be in my inbox and let's just say I wanted to, I wanted to create a contact for this, uh, for this from this email for this person in this email oh it's an anthony uh anthony i know that know the guy but i'm not sure if he's in my database one thing you can do with outlook to create a contact is you can simply simply do a drag and drop it's an outlook function and if i drag that email over my people folder it allows me to create a contact now profit crm which many of you are already using or looking at perhaps as a, as a solution does a unique thing with, whereas it that checks to see if that contact is already in your database so this screen is a is our crm uh, profit crm screen but let's just and i could if you have profit you'll do this and you'll see oh i can just open that contact so i don't have to create i wouldn't create a duplicate of this particular uh, person. So I already have Anthony in my database. But let's say I didn't. I just continue and I say create new contact. And it'll ask me because we're checking duplicates if I really want to do that. I say yes. And now I'm just going to take uh, that and look, it's the first name, last name, email address is all filled in and the content of that email is uh, put in the notes by default. Now notice one of the things you can do, often there's uh, information in a signature. You can either copy it or just drag it over to the appropriate field in Outlook, and it's just a very easy way to create a contact in Outlook. And, I, and again, I just did that as a drag and drop. I save and close it, and away we go. And again, all I did is I selected the email with my cursor, I dragged it down over here by my on my people folder, and I let go. So that's a simple little thing just to get us warmed up. Uh, but let's just while we're in, in here, let's just talk about setting up views. Uh, it's an important aspect of any uh, any Outlook user's life. Which is let's how do you how do you want to navigate? What do you want on your screen? Now notice I have, for example, I have my task list over here on the right. I have my re reading pane, my preview pane over here on the right. But you can change these uh, settings and create your own view that's to your liking. So the way you do that is you go up to this tab called View, and you'll see that there's a whole bunch of things. And remember, this is a three-part series, so we'll we'll cover a lot of these. Um, in future settings, but oh, things like maybe you want to just change the spacing uh, of your email. So if I click on this little icon that says use tighter spacing, look, it, it puts like twice as many emails in my list. If I want to open it back up, I just click on it again. Handy little thing. The uh, reading pane is really an important aspect of just previewing your emails. I like mine on the right for some reason, but you can change that to a bottom preview, as you can see here. Uh, so it's easy to do. And if you wanted to uh, change that reading pack, reading pane back to the right, you can just go back here and there's my little preview of the reading pane. So you can change where your preview pane, it's called a reading pane, so you don't have to open the email to see what's in it. So you can click on an email, kind of get an idea of what's in there, pretty cool. Um, now notice that I've got, again, my tasks, uh, my tasks, which are an Outlook function over here while I'm in my email. I, I like to do that because I work a lot with, with tasks, I have things I have to do. Now, in this case, um, you, you change that, it's called your to-do bar, and there's options on how you wanna do it. I selected tasks, but I could also add my calendar to my to-do bar. If you notice there, I put my calendar and a few of my appointments on for today on my right-hand to-do bar. If I don't want the calendar on there, I can simply take it off. Uh, you, so you can choose different things. People just gives you a quick search of your contacts. Uh, tasks and so on. So that's one of the main ideas of setting up a view. 
Another one, which I get questions a lot, is this down in the lower corner of Outlook. By default, you're probably going to be in what's called compact navigation. So let me just switch over to that. I'll come back to that. So now, is, now this is what a lot of people see. A little icon that looks like an envelope. I'm not sure what that one looks like. Two people, I, I don't know what that is. But the way you change that, if you want to, is there's these three little dots and you just click on them. You go into the, what's the navigation options and a couple of things you can do. One is uncheck this box that says compact navigation. And you'll see that it brings up actual labels that spell out mail, calendar, people, tasks. Now, personally, I relate to that better. I'm kind of getting tired of all the little icons. They're kind of confusing to me anyway. You can also add items to those, um, those little shortcuts down there. So if I go back into navigation options, you can see it says, how many items do I want to display and in what order? So if I added five and six, you'll see that it's going to add some things down here in my notes, my folders. If I don't want that many, I can simply go back to navigation options and reduce that to whatever, whatever number you want here. I'm going to go back to four because those are my, my favorite things. So now I'm back to my four main Outlook functions. And they, these, by the way, are by far the most important Outlook functions that we're learning about today. So just showing you a few things about setting up views using that uh, the, the little um, almost hidden navigation options function there to get you set up. Um, you can also, um, and while, while, we're while we're talking about just navigation, let's talk a little bit about uh, how you might want to set up uh, your calendar. Okay, so in your calendar, you're going to see that there are um, different things that you can do with your calendar, including whether or not you want your task list on the right. It's the same sort of thing. I go into view, and if I want to change my to-do bar by adding people or removing tasks, you can see how I just removed my task bar from that. Same idea, but my main view where I'm in right now is my calendar. So I'll put my tasks back on there. I just like it that way, but it's up to you. Um, there's going to be more advanced things later, but I want to show you something that's pretty darn cool. And one of it has it's about using color to get more organized. You can see that I have all these different um, these colors on my calendar, and what do they really mean? Well, they actually all have a meaning to me. Let me show you a couple of things about that. All that is is the most basic way to do that is you use the Outlook category function. I have one called bid prep. You know, maybe I want to create a some time to do my bid preparations. And it colored it that green color. Um, but, and oh, by the way, if you wanna go in and uh, if you've not edited these or customized these, you just go into where it says all categories and you can create a new category simply by giving it a name. Um, we'll call it a webinar example. And then it's one of my available um, categories. Okay, so you can create new ones. Here's, here they all are. And what, what you can do is you can simply color by checking that box here or as a shortcut, just by selecting one of them here. You can actually have multiple colors on a, on a calendar item. And then you can see when I save and close that, it'll have the, the primary color, which is the most recent one. And then it'll have the other little colors as flags there too. But here's some of the magic. I'm gonna show you how to automate the color coding of your calendar. Let's say I wanted to block off some time at 1 p.m. And I wanted to uh, prepare for a meeting. All right, I'll just say prepare for a sales meeting. And this is just the subject line right now. And, and let me see if I can type today. There we go. All right, prepare for a sales meeting from one to two. Okay, now what's really cool is when I save and close this, it's gonna automatically color it bright orange. Wow, cool. If I have, uh, you know, uh, some other other uh, automations in here, can, it will color them certain colors. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's just go ahead and delete that one right there. And I'm going to show you how to automate the color coding based on the subject line in your appointment. This is pretty cool. I got to check it out. What we do is we go up to view on the ribbon here, the, the ribbon, which we'll talk more about. And we're going to go into view settings. It's a little gear thing your icon, and we're going to go into conditional formatting. All right, now let's say that I wanted to uh, create a special color for, uh, let's just add, a, create a new uh, conditional formatting. 
And what do we want to do today? Okay, I want to do one called staff meeting. And so I'm going to change the title of that. I, I clicked add a new one. And I want to give the, the short, the, uh, the automation a name. I'll just call it staff meeting. And here's where you choose your color. And let's just say it's bright yellow. Okay. So now watch this. So that's all I got to do. So I, again, I created a new one by clicking add. I gave it a name. I chose the color that I wanted. And the condition is if the word staff meeting is in the subject line. Now you could create other conditions. For example, if the subject field or the notes or you know whatever, or who it was organized by or even attendees and such like, but let's just keep it simple. And we want that condition to be, if the term staff meeting is in an appointment, I wanna automatically color it bright yellow. So I'm just gonna create a new appointment here. And I'm gonna put the word staff meeting in the, uh, in the subject line here. We'll make it a one hour meeting. And now I'm gonna save and close that and check it out. It's bright yellow automatically. And that's how I color code, um, automate, automate the color coding of my calendar. Awesome, let's keep moving. Talk a little bit about the ribbon. People get confused by the ribbon. Uh, and throughout Outlook, you're gonna see this ribbon, 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 ribbon. Everywhere there's a ribbon. So what the ribbon is, is just a tab format. As you probably know, you can click through these. But what you may not know is that you can actually change this alternate between simplified ribbon like this or what's called classic ribbon. And I'm just right clicking over this blank area to access this little almost hidden hidden little uh, um, option there. So the classic ribbon gives you a whole lot more stuff to do. I mentioned briefly the difference between Outlook web and Outlook uh, desktop. Pretty much everything I've shown you so far is just available through the, you know, the Outlook desktop client, by the way except categories you can do those on the web and you know i'm not paid to have an opinion one way or another i'm just trying to tell you how i've been uh what my opinion is on on outlook and what you know which version to use and um and i just really like to help people be more productive so i prefer the desktop again but anyway the ribbon up here can be again changed between the simplified ribbon which is this just a fewer of these little icons you can alternate back Go and remember, you got to right click over the blank area, not very intuitive, and use classic ribbon or simplified ribbon. I like classic. Now, another thing you can do is maybe you just want more room on your screen here. You can also uh, do something called collapse the ribbon. And that just takes the ribbon away completely. And pretty soon you go, well, where did all my tools go? Well, you just have to go back in and you, um, you have to be in moused over one of those and uncheck the collapse the rib ribbon function. In that case, you have to mouse over and right click on one of the labels. Again, not very intuitive, but that's how it works. Fortunately, this is all being recorded. I had a, had a, a client the other day tell me he'd watched my Outlook training, my other Outlook, one of my other Outlook training videos three times now, and he still keeps getting more out of it. So, you know, you can, you can do that too, if you wish. So the ribbon uh, is a very important part of the navigation in a future um, session, we're going to get more into things like what's the developer tab all about and some other ribbon functions. But for now, let's, let's just keep going and get you all the basic information you need of how to set up views to get organized. Now, another thing you can do is you can set up your view based on your work week or what it's, what's just called week includes Saturdays and Sundays. And, uh, every once in a while, I look at my, um, my questions here. One of the questions I have, how did you place the weather just below the ribbon. Yeah, that's something we'll get into perhaps later, but um, that's, an, that's another option. In any event, um, I do wanna talk about the, um, just the basic navigation. So you can look at month, week, work week, day, and so on, and you just alternate between them. I usually you know, work in my work week, but you can do whatever you want here. It'll remember where you left off and uh, away we go. Now, we're not gonna get into all these little what you know, uh, functions up here, like sharing calendar, that will be in an advanced session at some point using if you're on Teams with Microsoft, and how that works and so on. But all we're really doing is I'm showing you some basic navigations to help you get organized. And uh, let's keep going here. And deal, by the way, all of those kind of things work in, in pretty much any view in profit, whatever view you're on, as you'll see. But one of the other things you can do is you can set up um, time zones. So if you go into your view settings, 
You can see these other things I can do in here. Uh, you can do things like, um, oh, change the fonts. Uh, you can change your time scale here. Um, time scale is a nice little thing to, to learn about because it automatically increments your uh, meetings that your blocks of time or meetings that you put on your calendar by default to be 60 minutes, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, or what have you. I keep mine at 30 minutes. It seems to work for me, but you can change that. And we were in this view a minute ago setting the, the automated color things. Again, what that's in the, the view tab and the view settings. And that's how you do that. Uh, time scale is a little shortcut right here for that as well. Cool stuff. Oh, color is good. This is just creates your default color scheme when you create an appointment. You know, what color is it? Uh, I have it set for that light blue, but you know, you might prefer orange or purple or something as your default color. And remember, you can always change the color by categorizing it a different way, right? So that's another color coding thing. Let's see here. Well, um, how about we segue a little bit into the um, contacts just for the heck of it here. I got to watch the time, but no, we're doing good on time. Um, let's talk about contacts and what they mean and how they work. So first of all, it's called people these days in, in Outlook. And you got all of these contacts in your database potentially. Uh, you might have a few, you might have a few hundred, you might have thousands like I do. But an important aspect is how do you view those? So one of the default views up here, I'm in, I'm in this little box called current view is this people view. I find it relatively useless, frankly, but some people like it. I don't know. It's just, I don't like the, the look of it. I kind of like my business card view and uh, I keep them kind of small because I'm not trying to give away any um, particular um, uh, people's addresses here, but uh, you can move it to a list view or it's a simple card view. That's like your V cards. And these are primarily here to help you do different things, you know, visualize the actual person uh, in one of the card formats or just if you like the people. But lists are useful because there's a lot of things you can do here. And I do want to show you a couple of basic functions here if you're just thinking about organizing your Outlook contacts. First of all, these columns, you can, um, you can add columns and, and, you know, kind of customize this view. And the way you do that is, again, not terribly intuitive, but you put your cursor over any one of the top fields and you go into what's called the field chooser, okay? And when I'm in there, pops up a little box, but it's gonna default to what's called their frequently used fields. And that might be fine. Um, and maybe you just wanna pick out one of those and put it into the, uh, into the columns, which you do, by the way, by taking, clicking on it and then just dragging it up. And when you see two red arrows, you drop it. And now that added that column to your contacts there. And then you can sort by these columns and so on. But I wanted to point out that it's not terribly obvious, but if you click where it says frequently used fields, then you get into all these other potential fields. Outlook has like hundreds of fields you probably don't even know about, but like one of them might, maybe you want one that just says, um, you know, all mail fields, that might be a good one or all contact fields or what have you. And these are just ways to get more data or more vis you know, visualization of what you wanna look at. And while I'm in contacts here, it's, uh, it may be obvious, but you can sort by any column, just do a, uh, an up and down sort. You can sort by, uh, you know, like state, for example, um, job title uh, and things like that. So that's just some basic, uh, I guess you'd just say basic navigation here in your, in your contacts area. Now Profit CRM adds a whole, uh, you know, another level to that turbocharging what you can do with your contacts, but that's kind of a little basic uh, example there. But now we're gonna get into uh, a topic that uh, I find that, you know, it's somewhat confusing to people, frankly, and that's how to use the, the uh, search function. Uh, so let's, Let's, um, let's talk about searching here. And while we're in contacts, let's just search for some contacts by a certain keyword. So you, the, the basic search function in Outlook these days is just up on top. And again, if you look up here, it has a little magnifying glass and it says current folder. So first of all, you can search different things, but I'm in my contact view and it's in a certain folder. So I'm gonna type in a very specific keyword that you'll see why I'm doing this here in a moment. And I'm gonna search for this term, Madagascar, 
in my contacts because it's a name of a project that I might have put some notes in there. Uh, look at that. How many of those contacts have that um, term somewhere in the notes? Madagascar, very specific. Now, if you type in a very general term, it's not going to be very useful, is it? So I just giving you an example. So let's just see what where that came from. Okay, well, here's a contact, some notes in it. Um, okay, look, look where it found it, found it in the notes. So that's how that search worked. All of these contacts that you see in the search results here, you're gonna find have somewhere in that contact, the, the word Madagascar. For me, it's the name of a project, at least in this example. So that's pretty cool. So you can search contacts in any view, by the way. But this is the view I like. This is my contact view, it's my business card view, right? And you can zoom in, zoom out, that kind of thing with it. But um, So searching contacts is one of the key things that you wanna do. Of course, you can also just search contacts by name, um, you know, like how many, uh, let me find somebody who, let's just do this street. And just type it in, hit enter. And there you go, any of those contacts, Ryan Street, Merrill Street, and so on. Clear the, to clear the search, you just go up here and hit that little X right there. Hopefully that helps you out. A little bit of searching uh, tips and tricks there. Now, a um, couple more things about contacts. Um, one of the things is, let's go back in and let's, let's do my Madagascar search again. And I just wanted to show you a couple more things about what you can do with these contacts. Okay, I did that search again. Uh, and let's just take uh, Tony Hawk. Uh, if you're my age, or my, 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 my kids knew who Tony Hawk was anyway. Uh, famous skateboarder. By the way, you've seen these addresses and phone numbers. Don't bother taking a screenshot or looking at the video too closely. It's all made up just for the, the demo here. <laughs> so anyway. Oh, I was gonna show you that you can categorize contacts. And the nice thing about that, it gives you a visualization then of, um, let's go back to Tony here. And if I click the category button here, you can see I have all these different categories and you can have multiple categories that you're uh, looking at there in any one contact. If you wanna remove a category, you just say click uh, clear. Anyway, that's a handy function um, is the category function, which by the way, if you're in a list view uh, of, of, uh, of your contacts, I'll go, you know, we can talk about that again, but you can also um, look at things my category in a list view. So let's go to list over here on the right, you'll see all my categories. Just a way to kind of visualize that. So let's let's keep on the search mode, but I'm gonna jump back to email while we're on the topic of search. So um, simple search is to type in uh, somebody's name. I'll type in Anthony. Maybe that's all I could remember. I hit enter. And all of these throughout here have the Anthony and, it's, and it highlights where it finds it, right? In the, the yellow there. Um, and, and that's useful. People probably do that all the time right now anyway. But um, I'm gonna show you one that you may not know about and that's refining the search to an exact match. So I'm gonna put Anthony Hopkins, but not, and I could just do that and it'll find a bunch of possible Anthony Hopkins matches. But here's what's really cool. If I put a quotation mark in front and a quotation mark at the end, check this out, it's only gonna have exact matches. Every one of these has that, that exact term, Anthony Hopkins in it. Uh, even these other memo fields and everything down in here that kind of our profit CRM notifications. Here's one, uh, again, I use the, Exact match, uh, this is part of the Boolean, I don't, don't get hung up on the term Boolean, kind of a funny sounding name, but the Boolean search terms is to find things like exact match. But let me show you this. What if um, I wanted to have uh, a little bit different type of search and I wanted to have Anthony Hopkins and the term, let's say enterprise, which is something that one of our product names. You can put the and in there. Now it's only picking up those showing me that have Anthony Hopkins and the term enterprise in it, pretty cool. So I'm showing you some of these um, Boolean functions they're called. It's really just a way to, to refine your searches so that you can not be looking at a gazillion things of data. Um, and that's really one of the key things. 
Okay, uh, people have asked again on a couple of times about this navigational stuff. So I'm gonna show you that again, just in case um, somebody wants to see. So one of the questions is how do I get the calendar to pop on my mail screen? Okay, well, let's, we can go into mail and um, I'll go into my other, but anyway, how you get your calendar to pop on your mail screen is I'm gonna go back to that. You go to view and you, you can put your calendar on the right. And maybe I want to have only my calendar, not my tasks. So there you have it. And remember, you can just kind of drag these around and make them wider and narrow, wider and narrower, and so on. So there's my calendar on my email screen. Hopefully that uh, that helped you out there. Thanks for the questions. Keep them coming if you wish. I have uh, we have almost a hundred people on the, on the call today, so I may not get to them all. All righty then, we were going to uh, talk a little bit more about uh, some search, search functionality here. So I'm going to show you a, a basic concept here. Uh, first of all, you can be in any, any email view that you want. And when you click on this search, now watch what happens, kind of get a visual notation of all of the, you know, what's on the screen right now. When I click on the search box, it automatically takes me and creates a neat little search um, tab here it wasn't there before you have to click your cursor up here where that magnifying glass is see all these little things you would never know but the purpose of this is to give you the ability to again refine searches so if you go here it's going to default to the current mailbox that i'm in here but i could select a folder subfolders everything in outlook I could search for things that were from or by subject. All of these, only those that have attachments and so on and so on. You can search by category. Um, and all of these things pop up only when you put your cursor. I'm gonna go exit that, let's get out of that. And you see right now, there's no search tab. Put my cursor in. I don't even have to type anything in. Up comes this uh, nice little box here with about 15 more things that you can do. Keep you busy for hours, let me tell you. Just playing with that. Um, let's talk a little bit about switch gears now and go into creating content from templates. This is people, one of people's favorite things to do. I'm just going to create a new email to somebody. And um, I'll just say it's to this guy Wayne here. And I, I would, you know what? I've, I've typed this thing a hundred times or more. Why don't, why isn't there an easy way for me to just insert content that I've already created? Well, as a matter of fact, there is, there's two ways to do it actually. One of them is an, an old function built, it's, it's been in, I think since Outlook, I don't know, you gotta, you gotta bear with me. I started using uh, Outlook in 1995 when it first came out. But anyway, it's been around a long time and it's called Quick Parts. So how that works is you can create a little library, right, of predefined content. And if I just go to insert quick parts, I can see my library and I can insert things that way. Again, where I'm at is I'm ready to type an email and I wanna insert something from a template. Insert tab over here on the right, there's a little thing called quick parts. And now you can select from those templates, okay. However, and this is pretty cool, right? I mean, you can, See how that would save you a ton of time. However, there's even a cooler way to do that. If I were to create an email and I wanted to um, put in one of those uh, templates, each template, as you remember, has a name, right? If you go over here, I'll get to kind of show you what I'm gonna do. And uh, that one says call, that one says campaign and so on and so forth. But uh, I, I could just type in a keyword, uh, keyword info and, as if by magic, it pops up that uh, template content. So that's all good, but how did you, how did I create this content? Hmm. Well, I, or these templates, it's not very hard actually. Let's just say I wanted to create this as a blurb of content. It's already been done. I got it out of my sent items or something like that. Um, and let's see here. All I want to do though is select what I want to create a template of, let's call it this. And I go back here to insert the tab and I go to quick parts, but this time we're going to navigate all the way to the bottom and say, save uh, selection to quick parts gallery. And I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it key K 
K-E-Y, key features, kind of a, my little mental shortcut. Now there's a little description of it if you need it. But now we're gonna delete all this and we're gonna insert that by keyword this time, okay? We're gonna just type in the word key. Now, if it's four letters or more, it'll start predicting it. If it's three letters or, or fewer, you have to hit F3 once you've typed it in. You'll remember all this, but there you go. Isn't this the coolest thing? Um, you know, I have one called costs. Everyone wants to, you do have to kind of spell your keyword correctly. Costs, you know, but did you again see how, I'll undo that. Did you see how, as I started typing in this, that it starts to predict that I might want to put in my, here are the licensing costs blurb, hit enter to insert. This is ridiculously cool. Hopefully you can get some use out of that. Now, there's another template area here. And that is up here on the right. If you're in a message view of email, and you're, you're in the message part of the ribbon, this ribbon thing again, you'll see a thing that says view templates. Now, if you haven't created any, there won't be any in here, sad to say, but you can create them very easily. And then you can just select content from these templates on the right. Now, why does, why does Microsoft give you these two, um, you know, different ways to have templates? Truth of the matter is I don't know, and I doubt that they know, but I'll tell you what I've found is that these templates follow me around in my Microsoft 365 account, regardless on what computer I'm on. Pretty cool, right? Uh, whereas uh, the quick parts do not, they're just a local function. It's really obscure how, how you go in and even transfer those you know, quick parts to another computer. It can be done, but I mean, you have to be like a computer programmer almost to do it. So I, I, I like them both, you know, there's no right or wrong. I just uh, I thought you'd like to know that there's different ways you can insert con content from templates, but hey, it doesn't stop there. It's not just an email function. And even if you know about the quick parts thing, you may or may not know that you can actually do it from a calendar. So for example, I do a lot of Zoom meetings. So I have a little quick part called Zoom. Ah, look at that, dial the number, away we go, right? And remember, if I put the subject line, what, staff meeting or you know, prepare for a, a call or whatever, it's gonna automatically color code it. Do that again, just for those who might not have seen that last time. Prepare for sales meeting. Now, I don't have to put any color at all on it. Let's just let's just say I wanted to, um, um, you know, save and close it. Boom! It colored it orange automatically. Isn't that cool? I showed you that before, but twice, two times the charm. Um, I've kind of got a lot of questions around the search stuff. I think we covered it pretty well, but again, I'll post my contact info. We can, we can have other conversations later. Um, so let's continue on this uh, inserting content from templates. Well, you may or may not know, you can do that in your task list too. Maybe you have a repetitive task that is, you know, you, you need some instructions in a, I mean, a task here, but let's create a new task. All right, and here's my new task and it's, uh, you know, follow up on quote or whatever. Now, maybe I would just want some content in here uh, to follow up with in that reminder. So now I set that reminder here. I'll just set it for today. And you can, reminders are optional. So by the way, when we talk about tasks, I wanna spend a little time as we go on tasks because people are often confused by, by tasks a lot. But I'm gonna color code this high priority and I'm gonna make it due today. And I'm gonna have a reminder at uh, noon and again, this content that I put in here, I, I could just type up, you know, I always want to, you know, review the features or the costs or something. So I can just insert that content from templates right in here. All right, so now I'm going to save and close that task. I am in my task view right now, but as you all remember, I keep my tasks on the right of my calendar, just so I don't have to go through, bounce through different views. And there it is. When I open that reminder, Here's all the information that I put in as that note, follow up on the quote, pretty cool. And by the way, uh, while we're talking about this sort of thing, you can also insert um, documents like a quote or something like that in here. And uh, you can see how there's a PowerPoint or that could be a quote or whatever. So when it pops that reminder up, it will actually have that attachment in it as well. Pretty awesome. Now, while we're talking about tasks. Let's kind of go back to the beginning and I'm gonna show you something I think you'll find really interesting. I'm gonna go back to my mail view 
And I'm going to take this email from Anthony. I showed you how to create a contact out of it. But this time, I'm going to create an appointment on my calendar with it. And remember, it has some content in it and things like that. I can just do a drag and drop over my calendar icon. And it'll create an appointment with that as this, with the what was in the email as the subject by default. And the content of that email is in my appointment. And now I can invite Anthony to that meeting if I want to, uh, you know, let's have a meeting. Let's make it a Zoom meeting. We also use Microsoft Teams just as much, but uh, we want to color code it. Or maybe uh, I just turn, you know, put the term bid prep in one of my automations and away we go. I just sent that appointment to Anthony and you're going to see it on my calendar here. But the point is I made it from an inbound email and it saved like three or four steps to create that appointment from that inbound email. Pretty awesome. Now, uh, let's see here. Uh, getting some questions about profit, which I don't mind answering briefly. So Profit CRM, not everybody on the call is a Profit CRM user or customer, but Profit CRM does a bunch of neat things with, with contacts. But I do want to go back to one thing since there's a question about it. The use of the, the private function is one thing that uh, you can use that Outlook, that Profit and Outlook both have. So this private button right here, if you mark a contact private, it will never show up in your Profit CRM. And there's an easy way to do it. You don't have to open them all. You just use that field chooser I was talking about and put the call in private there. And then you can just go down your list and, and check those boxes and it makes keeps them out of profit. And it just shows you they're private. Um, in any event, more questions like that we can pick up after in a follow-up call. Uh, all righty then. So I was kind of going through a little train of thought here and that was drag and drop an email to create an appointment. What if I already had uh, a task, let's just say, all right, follow up on the quote. Maybe I created the task first. Well, I could actually drag that over my calendar and create an appointment from the task. Pretty darn cool, because it saves so much time, right? Uh, so the idea of this transformational aspect of Outlook is, um, is a pretty powerful thing, because if you've got an email or uh, a task, you can create you know, appointments with them or contacts with them. It's all kind of interactive in that regard. Let's check my questions here real briefly. All right, I think I'm getting caught up on those. Um, I wanted to share with you, as we kind of wrap up here, kind of what, what this is all about and kind of get your mind around it. And uh, first of all, remember that this is the first in a three-part series. The next the next one will be called, Out, be called Outlook Intermediate Training, and it'll get deeper into the same subjects, plus add some new topics for you. And then there'll be a third one for Outlook Advanced Training. And that's where you're gonna have to really get your, you know, get your thinking cap on. But all of it's useful, useful stuff, I'm sure. But when we were talking about, I just want you to remember the main concepts here. Email is about communications. You need to easily be able to create content for emails. You need to be able to uh, find them efficiently uh, using search tools and such like, using your calendar to block off time, not just for meetings, uh, but with just to, so you make sure that you blocked off time to get things done. Tasks are important because it's your to-do list. Next week, you won't be looking at this week's calendar. I guarantee it, but your tasks will persist there. And by the way, Here's a little tip for everybody. Uh, if you get a bunch of these red ones, it means you're getting late on a bunch of stuff. So the tasks next week, next month, my tasks are gonna persist and they're gonna keep showing me that, hey, you know, you have some things you gotta do today, tomorrow, next week, or the red ones are late. So just keep that in mind. If you get a whole bunch of red ones, you're kind of getting behind the eight ball there. And then contacts. And contacts have all sorts of useful functions, but I've, I've found that a lot of people don't, effectively use, get con, you know, good contact data. And it's important that you do, the more you put into a contact, the better that data is gonna be uh, for you later. And like, if you don't have an email address in the contact, what good is that gonna do if you try to email that person? If you don't have their last name, it's nice to get as much information as you can. So I always encourage people to think of, think of that as the beginning of your journey in terms of documenting, even if you're going into a CRM like Profit, that it all starts a lot of times with the contact data. 
Um, well, good question while we're talking about basics. How is an appointment different from a meeting? It really isn't, it's just a terminology thing. Um, so a meeting though, is you invite people to it. That's one of the key concepts of a meeting or an appointment. Now, you can use the words in interchangeably a little bit from an appointment or meeting. They both imply that you're meeting with someone uh, thus, it's an appointment with someone or a meeting, but that doesn't mean you can't just block off time to do something. Uh, I don't call that an appointment or a meeting. That's just time that I'm blocking off to do things. So I hopefully that clarified that, that question there for you. Um, but here's uh, to kind of wrap up here. I, you know, I have a whole uh, curriculum on how to tame your Outlook inbox. It's, a, it's like some of the stuff we've covered in a lot more. There's a great video on it. Uh, I want to give you a couple of things to think about here. Uh, one of them is something that I've kind of come up with. I heard about this years ago I, at a seminar or something, um, and I kind of adapted it and, and uh, personalized a little bit for, for mostly how to deal with your outlook, the, your taming your outlook inbox. And here's the idea. If every time you get an email, you do one of four things, you're going to find it's amazing how much better your productivity will be and you won't get bogged down with thousands of emails. I've, I literally have talked to people with thousands of un, unread emails. So here's what you do. You get an email, you deal with it immediately. You can even set it to delete itself once you've answered it if you want. So you either deal with it, delegate it, and that would be a good time to create a task out of an email, right? So you can assign it to someone else. Intermediate and advanced training more on that. But delegate it, delay it. Maybe you wanna deal with it, but do, do it later. And just a little taste of what's to come in the next uh, one of the next series here is like you can automate things like uh, where emails go, um, you know, things like that. You can put them in a folder to read later. You can automatically flag them. There's going to be a ton of ton of cool stuff we'll study, but delay it is one of the options or delete it. If you don't do any of these four, you're going to find yourself buried with email and you'll be back for more of these uh, training sessions. I'm absolutely sure of it. And by the way, there's a couple ways that you can access um, uh, these webinars and such, and I'll show you that, and then I'll, I'll post my contact info here as we get as we get completed. Avidian.com is, is our corporate website, it's a company I work for. I uh, love the love Avidian, love our profit serum, been using it for for uh, many many years. But the webinar section right here has all of these uh, webinars that are uh, have been produced, and there's videos of them, all kinds of topics. You can also go to YouTube and search for my name or, you know, Warren Outlook Training uh, by Warren or something like that. You'll find it. It's all there. And uh, that's basically the end of today's program. So I want to thank everyone for uh, joining today. Hopefully we've added some value to your day. And I'm going to just leave this up for about 30 seconds. Most of you probably know me if you're a client. I'm very accessible. Feel free to reach out. Easiest way to reach me is just send me an email or call my direct line. But um, I'm glad I could, uh, again, add some value to your day. Take care, be safe, and have a wonderful rest of the day.